everyone. Thanks for joining me for another SEO webinar through Schweiki Media. I'm Alicia Lawrence from WebPageFX, a full-service internet marketing agency in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I have some big news for you guys, for those who don't know. Google has always been very secretive about their ranking algorithm, but in March, during a Q&A with Andre Lipicev, who's a search quality senior strategist at Google, he revealed the top two ranking factors, links and content. Of course, for SEOs, this is really just confirming what we already knew based off of experience. But I know that's not the case for most business owners or even marketers. So I wanted to break down the relationship between links and content and what you need to know about using these two tactics together to successfully rank in the search results. When talking to clients, I often get asked about the importance of links and content and which one they should focus their budget on. First, let's talk about links. An inbound link is when another site links to a page on your domain, but not all links are good. Google sees a link to your site as a recommendation. So let's say the New York Times links to a page on your site in one of their articles. Hallelujah, it's a miracle. The New York Times is a very reputable site with a high domain authority. For those who don't know, uh, domain authority, which is the DA you see in the red box, 100, which is the highest you can actually have, is a uh, metric by Moz that you can view by downloading the Moz bar. And it just means um, how well the site overall ranks in the search results. In this case, the New York Times almost outranks just about everything. A link from the New York Times is seen like a recommendation from President Obama. Very highly valued. Now, if you get a link from a small town new blogger with a domain authority of 30 to 40, like this blog right here, Homey Improvements, that's like getting a recommendation from a, a friend or a teacher who has some influence. Now keep in mind, just because you can't get a very high domain authority link like from the New York Times to your blog doesn't mean that you can't rank really well. It just means that you need to get more of these medium DA sites like DA 40 to 60. And the more you get, the better it looks to Google. However, there is another area that you get links from that looks very shady. So for example, let's use cosmobc.com. Now, if you have some shady blog that's actually a link farm ran by Black Hat SEO trying to game the system, well, that's like a druggie in jail recommending you. And so to Google, that's a huge red flag. We call these shady, less desirable sites, bad neighborhoods. Because once you become associated with them, it's really hard to get that stain off your reputation. I'm telling you about bad neighborhoods because often you'll get SEOs or people approaching you who say they can build 30 quality links to your site for $500. These are usually sites in bad neighborhoods. Any link worth having is going to cost a lot of money or a lot of work to get. Now, I wanna show you how to pick up how this is a bad neighborhood blog. Because if you look at it, it's the same domain authority as Homey Improvements. There's two main areas that you wanna look at to see if a site is you know, good to get a link from or if you should pass up. Uh, the first thing you wanna do is click on the first few articles you see, and you're looking to see what type of links they're linking out to. Because Google picks up on relevant link building. Um, so if they see that a site's doing irrelevant link building to really spammy sales pages or with really strong sales anchor text, then that's going to be a huge flag to Google and therefore you don't want to be associated with that. So right here, this is an article about online retail business success, but in the first few paragraphs, it mentions forklift hire company, which has nothing really to do with online retail. They somehow loosely tied it in, but it's obviously a very spammy link builder job. Um, and you definitely don't want to be associated with a site who's willing to give links away like that. And even when you do your link building, keep this in mind. It's fine to have keywords in mind that you want to loosely base your link off of for anchor text, but you don't want to have this type of anchor text because Google has been picking up that that's really spammy and they don't want to endorse that for sites to do. So uh, definitely try to give more of a three to four word um, loosely based off of the page you're linking to. 
so that it looks very natural to the reader and to Google. The second thing you're going to want to do to see if a site is spammy is plug their URL into Ahrefs. This site will tell you what kind of backlinks they're getting from different IP networks. Now the reason why you look at this is because a lot of times we call them bad neighborhoods because a person will create 30 to 40 blogs and then link to each other and try to build their domain authority that way. And sometimes they can get a high domain authority, but oftentimes Google will punish them right off the bat. But before they do, they might be able to uh, convince you to get a link from their site or pay for a link from their site. Um, so definitely not good. You want to look here. This specific site had 240 backlinks uh, from one network, which is definitely a red flag. So you want to make sure you stay away from sites that have that type of uh, backlinks from just one IP network. Now let's look at content. Well, Google has hundreds of factors that play a part in their algorithm that helps them make this decision for the user. Let me explain why content is so valuable in terms of a business site. Even if you're not a blog or a magazine or a newspaper, you're still a publisher when it comes to your website. In order to rank for keywords, you need to have content on your site that says that you know about that topic. Since there are so many sites on the web, Google needs a way to determine which ones would best fit the user's query. So over the years, they have found that having a lot of content usually means that that site is an expert because they know a lot about the topic. You can't just post the same thing over and over again because Google has caught on and they punish duplicate content. Plus, you must always remember to write for the reader, not just search engine robots. And people want valuable quality content that is easy to understand and is comprehensive. This presents a problem for smaller industries or companies that may think they have already exhausted everything they could talk about in regards to their product or service. If you've already written kind on all the questions that your potential consumers ask about your product or company or industry, then it's time to expand to peripheral topics. Let me show you a few charts to help you better understand how this helps build up your rankings and acquire new customers. First, let's talk about the different stages of content topics. Let's say you are a college that offers cosmetology courses. You've already written about the core topics or sales pages that have to do with courses in cosmetology and how to succeed as a cosmetologist. So now we need to go to the second outer circle and cover niche topics that might not be your main sales keywords or even have that as high as traffic as your main sales keywords, but are still very relevant to what you do. The keywords you want to go after are long tail keywords, which are usually three or more words such as trends in cosmetology or the evolution of lipstick. These topics are targeted at users who are either in cosmetology and therefore establishing your company as a thought leader in the industry, or readers who may have an interest in cosmetology that haven't yet taken the step to become a cosmetologist. Now it's time to think about questions and scenarios where a cosmetology course could answer a problem, but the person might not know that it could. And that leads us to this third outer circle. These topics include ones like great jobs for moms or second careers for teachers. Cosmetology may not be mentioned in those headlines or even your main keywords for that article, but you do mention cosmetology in the blog post as one of the options for those people to explore. And of course, you link to your cosmetology program page for more info. So let's do a little exercise here. Ask yourself the question, what problem does my product or service solve? Then write an article all about that problem and try to rank for the terms and questions that people with that problem type into Google. To learn more about this process of finding these types of topics and keywords, check out the post I wrote on SEMrush about the stepping stone process. I'll link to it in the post below. If you want to succeed on the web, it's important to not stop creating content after you finish just your core pages or what's in that first inner circle. Explore the topics in the outer two circles to help guide users who are in all various stages of the sales funnel, not just when they're ready to buy. I like to think of content, whether it be guides, blog posts, infographics, or videos as bridges from where the customer is in the sales funnel 
to the bottom where they are now ready or persuaded to buy your product. Some consumers who could be potential buyers are nowhere near your website island. They aren't even aware that it exists. So instead of waiting for them to discover your goods, you're going to go to them by creating content that appeals to them right now where they are. Sometimes this means creating bridges that lead to more bridges before the reader is ready and educated enough to make an informed decision that they need your product to solve their problem. Not only do these types of topics help you reach customers who are just at the beginning of the buyer's journey, but also gives your site something very important. It gives it a resource that people want to link to. So in the end, you're not just creating content that appeals to your potential customers. You're also creating content that publishers would be interested in linking to. Let's look at a case study of one of these topics. Why are my leaves turning yellow? It's an infographic that I actually created for Safer Brand. And we actually, after creating it, got bunch of traffic, 48 backlinks, which is huge, um, close to 39,000 social shares. And it's all because we appealed to a broader audience and we used long tail keywords to target those types of readers who are interested in learning why their leaves are turning yellow. Now you might think, well, what product does that sell? Well, actually in the article, one of the problems is a pest problem. And the company I was doing this for, Safer Brand, actually does have a organic gardening uh, pest solution. So we were able to link to that product and that page actually did convert into sales. So when you plan your SEO, build out pages that hit potential customers at all stages in the buyer's journey and then promote those pages to get links organically. Now looking back at that Yale Leaves graphic, keep in mind a big factor in all that success was promotion. So remember to always promote your content. That's huge in order to get the most from it. Links and content shouldn't be in competition for your budget. They really should be working together. Remember the type of content that will do well in promotion to get organic links is content that offers valuable info that publishers would want to tell their readers about or is variable, sh very shareable like guides, how to's, interviews, lists, or infographics. Keep the publisher in mind that you want links from when you create your content because you could even pre-pitch the idea to them to make sure they would be willing to use it once it goes live. You can also purposely build relevant links to those pages to boost their rankings. The best way to do this is by guest blogging or becoming a contributor to relevant resource sites in your industry. In this case, you have a little more control over the anchor text and page that you link to. Links and content are very important, especially now that it's been confirmed that they are the top two ranking factors in Google's algorithm, but don't neglect optimizing the rest of your site either. If you have questions, you can email me or visit webpagefx.com for more info on how we can help you get more revenue from the web.